from Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Q covering Red Hat Summit 2017. Brought to you by Red Hat. Welcome back to theCUBE's coverage of the Red Hat Summit here in Boston, Massachusetts. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Stu Miniman. We are joined by Armagan Ahmad. He is the Senior Vice President and General Manager, Solutions and Alliances at Dell EMC. Thanks so much for joining us. It's my pleasure, good to see you, Rebecca. So we've had you on the program before, but your role has changed a bit at Dell EMC uh, since then. Tell us what you're doing now. Sure, um, I have the pleasure to now lead our uh, solutions uh, business unit that we have under Infrastructure Solutions Group. Uh, what we drive is focus areas of customer outcomes, right? Um, uh, workload orientation around high performance computing, driving data analytics, business critical applications, software defined solutions, and then also hybrid cloud. So those are our five big priorities. It's a big uh, mandate. It is a big <laughs> mandate, right? And uh, you know, as you know, Dell EMC is number one in everything. <laughs> That's what we talk about. You'll hear this at Dell EMC World next week. Uh, but uh, you know, at Red Hat Summit, we're, we're really uh, having this discussion, right? Red Hat OpenStack Summit, which is really around uh, our differentiation, how we're driving human progress forward, social innovation forward. So that's exciting. Um, so you know, as we take our applications and partner with our alliance partners, um, that's the that's differentiation we're excited to share uh, with customers and partners here at Red Hat Summit as well. So Dell EMC, as you said, is uniquely suited yeah. to, to do these things and lead in this way, but how do you make deployment easier? I mean, that's, that's the big questions that the customers and partners want need to know. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, um, as you know, being number one in everything, when I, when I joked about this, I'm not joking about this, if you really think about you know, our market share in compute, uh, or servers, if you look at our market share in storage, external storage, internal storage, if you look at our market share in converged infrastructure, hyper-converged infrastructure, if you see our market share in data protection, or our market share in open networking, right? So we're top, uh, all the way to the far top right of the Gartner Magic Quadrants, number one in market shares and revenue. But that's all interesting, but what's fascinating for the customers is really more about how do you make all of this real if you envision like a pyramid almost, right, and you think at the bottom is all of these infrastructure layers, the next one above that is virtualization, the next one above that is orchestration, but really on the top is a platform, the top of the pyramid. That's, what, that's where the business sits. Business wants a platform, and what we're doing is trying to make all of that easy. We know that the customers will build, and they would want to do a DIY and bespoke based solution, and, and we obviously have that, we've been doing it for decades, but we're really trying to move to that top end of the pyramid with our hybrid cloud solutions, our converged solutions, but more the solutions that my organization leads is the blueprint solutions. And the whole idea about blueprint solutions is that how can we offer ready offerings to customers so that they don't have to really worry about the bottom of the pyramid but the top uh, of a platform so that it's easy to deploy. And, and customized for their business. Absolutely. Yeah. Armagan, in the keynote on, on day one, we heard that you know, one of the top priorities for customers is figuring out their cloud strategy. Now, yeah. Dell EMC, you have a, a number of offerings. C can, can you bring us up to date? Where does OpenStack fit into that? And you know, of course, we're all going to want to talk about uh, the, the Red Hat joint solution that you yeah, offer. Yeah, absolutely. You know, o OpenStack, and uh, let me take a, even a step back. You know, Michael, uh, 31 years ago since he founded you know, Dell, uh, has always stood for choice for customers, open ecosystems for customers. And uh, even though we have Dell Technologies now with the acquisition of you know, so many of the other assets that are, that are under Dell Technologies, uh, we're really delighted to you know, partner and and ensure that we have the right kind of choice that we're offering to our customers. So OpenStack, Stu, you know, uh, puts a very big differentiation forward. You know, I'm here with, with our Dell EMC team uh, at uh, Red Hat OpenStack Summit and our customers uh, are telling us in a very, very clear way, and the channel partners who are here, is that they're looking, uh, looking for Dell EMC to really provide open source based solutions in telecom markets, in, you know, when you take a look at telecom and it's moving from 3G to 4G to now 5G coming on, it's really going to be the applications and how those applications become scale out versus just infrastructure becoming scale out, right? So now the evolution of OpenStack and how Dell EMC contributes to it, we never really wanted to build our own uh, uh, ecosystem of OpenStack like some of our you know, other competitors have done. We've always stood by Red Hat OpenStack based solutions to say, hey, you know, if they're number one in OpenStack markets and they're already tuning that, why can't we tune our infrastructure uh, solutions the exact same way? 
so that one plus one equals five for the customers, right? And it becomes much easier for them to deploy that. Great, uh, so absolutely, you mentioned some of the telecoms. NFV was probably the most talked about use case for OpenStack at yeah. last year's summit. Yeah. We've got the OpenStack summit here in Boston. Next yeah. week we'll be covering it. You know, is, is that a top use case for your solution with Red Hat? What other, uh, you know, what are, the, what are the real business drivers for people doing OpenStack? Is it just, you know, a private cloud solutions that they offer that you said mentioned the open source? Yeah. You know, people are still trying to figure out, you know, where this OpenStack fits uh, compared to some of the other options that they have. Stu, you know, what, what I'm finding, and you know, you and I have had these discussions several times across the stack, right, of yeah. server storage networking and others, uh, the largest cost associated with um, deploying uh, or uh, consuming IT is really your OPEX cost. So if you envision for a second a, you know, pie chart and you look at a customer spend, a capital spend, about 25% of that is CapEx oriented, which is how much you pay for infrastructure or software. About 75% of that is OpEx oriented, which is you know, your human cost of managing it, your you know, services, serviceability and others. The whole idea about you know, us talking about this uh, Dell EMC ready bundle solution that we're taking to market. So uh, we announced yesterday our opportunity to really go out and simplify all of this for customers for cloud solutions or for their NFV or NFVI solutions, right? As we're seeing NFVI. Oh, okay, for our audience uh, that doesn't know NFVI, what's the differentiation well, there? Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> our opportunity to take a network fun function virtualization yeah. and uh, then taking VNF uh, you know, uh, capabilities and then also making sure that we're virtualizing a lot of those aspects on NFVI so that our customers are driving service provider uh, opportunities to then containerize these opportunities as part of OpenShift and others, and we feel that our differentiation um, at Dell EMC really then ends up becoming um, our uh, tested, validated offerings so that customers don't really have to worry about the infrastructure layer, or even the software layer for that matter, and we can just give them a platform that I was referring to earlier. So that ready bundle for uh, OpenStack uh, that we have offered, um, and I'll be talking about it in my keynote today, that whole ready bundle at Dell EMC solution has been validated, tested, it's got not just reference architectures, but deployment guides, run books, um, but we've also taken it one step forward. We actually internally called it Jetstream. And the whole idea of Jetstream internal code name uh, was, uh, if you guys are familiar with jet streams around the world and you catch one of those jet streams, uh, they usually go from you know, west to east. Uh, if you go from Boston to London, you can get there pretty quickly if you hit one of those because it's 160 miles an hour. Uh, that's why we selected the name uh, Jetstream. And, and the whole idea is if you actually imagine if you uh, put a Concorde <laughs> in that Jetstream, you can actually do that trip now in three hours or you could have done it when Concords were around at that time. So if we can actually create that Concorde-like style uh, of a ready bundle solution that has that is running um, OpenStack platform, we can not only get the customers to deploy much faster uh, and reduce their OpEx, but there's a tooling that's required. So for example, if a customer wants to deploy an OpenStack solution, uh, we actually created a Jetpack, Jetstream Jetpack. Yep, yep. And the whole idea of a Jetpack is very quickly us providing sizing tools and deployment tools for customers so that they can uh, they can get to their destination uh, very, very fast. Uh, in and terms how of their fast are OPEX. we talking here? So we're talking, I'll actually have a customer, uh, East Carolina University, on stage with me. Uh, uh, something that would take three weeks, they, they got it done in three days. Right, using these, the, this Jetpack solution. Great. So us creating these ready bundles and deploying OpenStack much faster, either for cloud environments or environments for NFV and, and eventually for NFVI. And then you know, we're also working with our uh, Dell EMC code group, which is now looking at containerization uh, solutions as well. So that's, that's sort of the differentiations yeah. that we're talking and, about. And right Armagon, now. I know it's, it's, we, we're really good usually at quantifying that kind of, that, that deployment, that, yeah. that you know, shrinking right months to days or days to, to yeah. hours. Uh, that operational efficiency though of once it's in there, yeah. do you have any metrics or cost savings that y your customers in general are seeing as you know, rolling this out versus yeah. you know, the old kind of putting yeah, it together themselves. Yeah, great yeah. questions too, great. So we all measured, uh, Rebecca, you know this, you've written for HBR, mm -hmm. which is really about ROI right, and exactly. TCOs for customers, right? Yeah. What is your return on investment and your total cost of ownership? And really, you know, what we're finding is that we can do this um, about 30% uh, more effective. I'd love to say it's 80% more effective where we can take your OPEX down and others, but, but realistically, if you really look at um, you know, East Carolina University or many of the other customers who are deploying this, uh, 
uh, they're, they're seeing on average about 30% improvement in their operating costs. Now, it's not just related to cloud, or it's not just related to NFV and NFVI. We're also seeing a huge use case of OpenStack now as part of high performance computing. Right, so as high performance computing is evolving from traditional research and moving more into machine learning and AI frameworks, we're also seeing customers leverage OpenStack in that, in that environment as well. So. And I wonder also, I mean, just talking about the difficulties with calculating yeah. ROI, but talking about how it ha is having this big impact on high performance computing, what about high performance teams? Yeah. The people who are actually doing, doing the work. Absolutely, and you know, uh, so talking about high performance team, right, the web tech, uh, we grew up in, you know, it started in Silicon Valley, now it's in Dublin, Ireland, or it's in China, or, or, or all of these other places. Uh, they've really figured out, right, how do you drive efficiency? I mean, at Facebook, I think one server admin manages 50,000 physical servers or something like that, right? That's a scale out <laughs> way. Yeah, and, and the thing we always say, it's that person's job is very, it's not just that they're doing three orders of magnitude more than the poor guy running around the data center. Yeah. You know, the, they, 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 they've changed really how they focus on the application and, That's right. and that job's very different. So they don't really even have server admins. They That's just right. have the number of headcount that they do. Number of headcount that's required. Hyperscale model, very different from what we had in the enterprise absolutely, world. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. But there are lessons to be learned from yeah. the hyperscale model and if you can drive, I mean, according to IDC, one server admin manages about you know 40 physical servers, somewhere between 30 to 40 physical servers versus the number that I just shared with you, right, from <laughs> these big web tech providers. So if you can even improve that to a hundred or a thousand to one admin, right? Uh, I think sysadmins still you know, uh, should continue to you know, exist even though this whole you know, public cloud uh, you know, is coming in, but the rise of edge computing for us is also a big, big phenomenon, right? And we want to ensure that the rise of edge computing, uh, Dell EMC is at the forefront of and ensuring that we're providing analytics solutions you know, to our customers and a lot of the analytics are really happening at the edge because you need to make those analytics decisions very quick can't really have a lot of latency back you know, to public cloud for that. So, so our hybrid cloud solutions, um, you know, working very closely with OpenStack to drop you know, OpEx costs down, uh, all of that really matters to customers right now. Armagan, I want to go back to something you talked about in the very beginning, which is this element of human progress. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a, it's a prof professional and personal passion of yours. It is, yeah. uh, to use technology for good, to, to yeah. solve some of the world's most complex problems. Uh, educating young women, uh, working in developing countries, yeah. curing cancer. Yeah. Talk a little bit about what you're doing. You know, Rebecca, that's that's a huge passion of not just mine, but Michael and all of our executive leadership team at Dell EMC. I'm sure we were talking earlier before this interview started. It's a passion of yours and Stu's, right? We all love to, as human beings, uh, you know, contribute to society. And human progress is really technology is impacting human progress in different ways, right? If you talk about manufacturing jobs versus you know what automation is, but at the same time, technology is also helping in many different areas, right? So if you look at developing countries, and you know, I'm personally involved in you know, girls' education in third world countries where they're not prioritized and what can technology do uh, at schools to really get them to learn coding and, and get, uh, you know, get, get a differentiation out very, very quickly. Uh, but at the same time, you know, our, uh, our, our Dell initiatives, uh, we call it the legacy for good. Uh, the Dell initiatives are really not just about diversity and inclusion, it's also about improving human progress. So I'll give you an example. Yeah. Uh, we have a great customer, TGen, and TGen uh, is, uh, is is in healthcare field and they drive genome sequencing solutions. So they have scientists who drive genome sequencing. Now if you think about genome sequencing before uh, technology, how long it would take somebody to sequence certain genomes for the purpose of you know, cancer research, that would take you years. Right. Now if you can get that done in minutes and, and that technology will learn and then next time you do it, it would be even seconds for the same, same platform. Uh, so we actually developed a life sciences genome sequencing high performance computing cluster. Right for this customer, and now they're able to very quickly, uh, you know, help uh, you know young girls and young kids uh, uh, improve their longevity with their cancer uh, treatment that they're going through. So those are the things that really matter to our teams, mm -hmm. and I know it matters to our customers and our partners because now we're not talking about just OpenStack or Dell EMC and our great number one and everything solutions we have. Those are fantastic, but how do you relate that to social innovation? How do you relate that to human progress? To me, that is really the differentiation that we all collectively need to continue to drive and talk about this a little bit more, right? Oh. We do need to find more um, connection points that you know, we know that technology can help, but it's really those medical professionals and those researchers, they're really the brainiacs who use our technology. Our, our opportunity as tech uh, geeks, or, <laughs> or I call myself a geek at least, <laughs> is, um, is how do we 
uh, take that and, and then take that out to them and, and then uh, real researchers can build uh, their platforms on top of it to, to cure cancer. Right? Or, uh, or to go drive uh, manufacturing jobs, uh, you know, for social innovation purposes in middle America or around the world. Right? That that's the difference, and those are the solutions that you know my team, along with many others at Dell EMC, uh, along with our partners with Red Hat, we're focused on. We talk about that a lot, and Jim Whitehurst talked about you know social innovation mm -hmm. and you know how the, how Red Hat is is also uh, making that a priority this morning in his keynote. Yeah. Armagon, it sounds like your team's quite busy, and I know you've got your big event coming up next week, so you finish the keynote here, you'll be jetting out to Las Vegas. Rebecca, a big set of our CUBE team, will all be See out in there. Vegas to yeah. cover the show. Great. So give our audience a, you know, a little bit of a preview of what you can about what we should expect for you know, the, the new Dell EMC world is uh, kind of taking together what EMC world has been yeah. doing for many years and uh, the Dell world in the past. You know, we're really excited, Stu, yeah. about Dell EMC world, because uh, this is the first time uh, you know, Dell world and EMC world comes together in Vegas, so you know, we'll look forward to having you guys there. Uh, we have uh, great speakers lined up. We, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's really focused for customers and technical audiences. Uh, we've got lots of partners there. Uh, but more importantly, we're showcasing all the solutions and the culmination of Dell EMC merger that has happened along with our Dell Technologies. Um, you know, group of companies like Pivotal, along with VMware, along with SecureWorks, along with VirtuStream. And how do we differentiate, um, not just the Dell brand, which is our, you know, client computing group that we have, um, but also our Dell EMC, that's server storage networking, and then you know with VMware and Pivotal and others. Um, uh, what you'll see is uh, not just great keynotes with some great speakers, great entertainment. Uh, uh, I don't know if that's been released. I think it's been released. It, it's it, on it, it has. Gwen yeah, Stefani, absolutely. I think it's she's. Andy Grammer and, Andy Grammer. Uh, um, yeah, Gwen Stefani. Gwen Stefani, so. yeah. So, yeah. So that's going to be pretty cool. So we're excited about that. But uh, the, the speakers that we have lined up um, uh, on main stage, along with, uh, I'm more excited, I, I geek out. I'm a nerd, I, I love going into these technical breakouts where we've got lab equipment set up where people can actually get to enjoy, and, uh, and oh, I call it enjoyment, <laughs> which is you know, really geek out with understanding what are all of those solutions that we have uh, you know, put together, and those blueprint solutions, what are they? Uh, we have obviously our server storage networking and data protection, but then how do you get into those labs and uh, run some demos and proof of concepts that makes it easy for the customers? So we're excited about that, as you can see. Well, we're looking forward to it. We'll yeah, see we'll you there. Yeah, look forward to hosting you there. Armagon, thank you so much for thank joining you. us. My pleasure. This has been Rebecca Knight and Stu Miniman. We will return with more from Red Hat Summit after this.